you very much. Uh, I really appreciate the warm welcome. Uh, can you hear me? Am I yes. Yeah. I wasn't very clear about uh, what you really want me to talk about, but I will go forward and I will take questions and try to tell you uh, what, what little I know, and that's really very little. Uh, so with regard to the whole writing exercise, I, I was told that creative writing is something on the minds of many people. Uh, I won't talk about that. I have a few books. Uh, I think I'll, I'll just show it to you in a second. But I'll explain to you why I'm showing you. I'm not advertising or marketing anything. Do not buy my books. I'm only <laughs> saying this is what I just showed you. Okay. This is just intended uh, for a purpose that it is possible for anyone to write. And it, it depends on so many things. First off, I'd like to say that my association with uh, Toastmasters is one of admiration, but from a distance. It's just that I've never had the opportunity to actually come to this place, and I think I regret that I did not take the opportunities that offered to me at a certain point. But having said that, my journey, uh, my career in various firms, uh, has always looked at leadership development of various kinds, right? And there is no doubt whatsoever that a good public speaker uh, is someone who marks himself out from the crowd. And it's not only about speaking, right? The whole thing about communication is not only about speaking. It's the whole thing about eye contact, it's about how well you listen, and the empathy that you show, etc. And my understanding is that those are the kinds of qualities that are you know, looked at at Toastmasters in a very uh, scientific and systematic way. Which means, of course, there's a lot to be said about all of you that you're motivated enough to want to come here and to improve whatever you think needs to be done for your sake. So, surprisingly enough, this is not, I think, common to many people. Many people fall into a rut. In fact, the word that I really particularly hate, you know, uh, is settling down. You know, uh, I don't know if you have come across that. Since since childhood, there's a whole thing that you must settle down. Uh, and, and there are all these stereotypes. For guys, it's a career. You must get a job and settle down. And for women, of course, you must find this guy and settle down. <laughs> to me, it's like this funeral. You know, it's, it's a very, it's a very sad thing. Because essentially, it means there's nothing further to be done. You're, you're, you're all set, and time will pass. You will go to the choose of whatever life has to offer, and then one day you will die, and you will live this life. But you know, I don't think that's really uh, that's not me. Anyway. I, 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 I think being unsettled, being a sense of disequilibrium. I don't know if that's the word, but I just made it up. Uh, is a good thing. If everything is absolutely perfect, plain, wonderful, what really are you doing in life? I think this business of risk taking is important. The business of having really rough experiences in life is actually enriching in the long run. And that's why, you know, for example, many people are here. I can make a shrewd guess that some of you are here because someone has either taunted you or you felt hurt or felt made some insensitive remark about you in some way and that has really irritated you and your friend. I need to, you know, come forward and improve my public speaking skills, for example. By, by the same token, things like writing, right? Of course, many of us have passions, right? Many of us have childhood passions, which the adults in the, in the fantastic wisdom uh, make sure that they destroy as soon as possible. Because creativity in children is seen, you know, let's, okay, fine, the child, but sooner or later he's going to stop this creativity business and settle down. Which means nothing must, must be a pure black, gray landscape of life and nothing will happen. So uh, I would like to ask you, for example, have some of you, some of you remember learning music when you were children, which you no longer pursue? Yes. Some of you? Yeah. yeah. And we may ask, why, why is it that today you don't pursue music? What are your set of excuses as to why you don't do that anymore? Work never gave me enough time to practice. Right, that's one. And uh, anything else? My mother never encouraged me. Okay, so that's also there. <laughs> oh, I think I just said something about that guy. Anyone else? Actually, I pursue, so I... You, you do, but, but there are many who, who will leave their passion, and those, those can be many things. It can be stamp collecting, it can be painting, it can be dancing, it can be anything. But somewhere along, this miserable adult comes and tells you that this is not what you should do. And, and in fact, you, you take, take that, you absorb that, and over a period of time, once you reach a certain age, let's say 20 or 30, there are always lovely excuses why you can no longer regress back into the creative phase of your life when you were really happy doing things and not necessarily looking for anything else. You know, just the very act of collecting flowers, the very act of painting without a purpose, the very act of creating tunes, those are good enough. That's all. Why? You don't need anything further. 
but there's always someone who knows better and says you shouldn't be doing this. And so maybe much of our life gets wasted in my opinion because we are conforming to the whole momentum of uh, you know life, life's currents, if I may say so, right? But if you go back, each of us has had a very rich life, full of pain, pleasure, passions, etc., etc. But we find it awkward to actually write about it. Now again, if you do get writing, right? If I were to ask you, have any of you written, have you, did any of you have a passion for writing in the past? Can any of you answer, did you have that passion? Did you feel like, yeah? You, so, and, and why, sir, did you give it up? I, I'm assuming if you did, you've given it up. I haven't given it up. Oh, that's wonderful. I want to find out a guy who's given it up. <laughs> Anyone here who said, no, you know, I, I'm not really ready for it because, you know, professional things. What, what would be the reasons? No one read my <laughs> and many of us are poets, you know, many of us, I'm sure many of us are poets, right? I mean, I remember when I was a, a teenager, uh, one of my very close friends, who unfortunately expired now, he, uh, he was uh, pursuing this lady, you know, young girl, right? And unfortunately, uh, you know, he did not have the ability to write poetry, but he knew that what girls want is a sensitive, you know, guy who writes and likes beautiful things, writes beautiful words. So he outsourced his projects to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, talking about college, I was actually in Rukhi myself. So from Rukhi, you know, I'm going to write these letters for him. He would rewrite and then give it time. He achieved yeah. success in his professional, uh, you know, pursuits, whatever those pursuits were. So writing actually is, 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 is very cathartic. In my experience now, this particular book uh, called The Time Merchants, Again, do not buy, I'm not marketing, I'm not selling, I'm just telling you that I wrote this book, right? It's a collection of 30 stories. And uh, if, I, if I go back into when I wrote this and why I wrote this, etc., I find that it, it is a combination of two things. One is, there are certain events that took place in my life, which were the triggers, which I capitalized on, which I said I must do something about. Now, the other option was, do nothing. It's always an option, right? But I wrote, and I remember the first story that I wrote, was at about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I was wide awake, I was traumatized by something, and I wrote this story, which actually made sense. When I woke up, I found, well, it's not bad yet, right? Uh, then, of course, remember, I also had other passions. Uh, I, I, when I was very young, I had this passion for, for, for music. So I, I'm actually a very, very mediocre violinist. I love the violin. Even today, I play the violin. I could not say that I'm a brilliant violinist, but I have kept that going. So there are, there are things like that. There's a, there's a violin there, and I also am very fond of animals. So all of us, and I'm just describing myself, but you know, each of you individually has a sphere of influences or, or things that are happening to you which are unique to you. Somebody talked about a German shepherd, some, you know, things, things like that. These are things we observe. Even today, right now, you are all mapping people in this room. You're making, creating opinions about each other, etc. There are stories that can be written about today's events as well. Somebody can write a story about this. But what stops you? Nothing. It will be tomorrow. I, you know, I, I can't write. I don't know how to write. And I'm, I'm kind of busy, so I'll do something later. I'm professionally very preoccupied, making tons of money, so I can't write a story. Nevertheless, the point here is each of these stories had a trigger point. And that, that is to say, one of the other influences in my life at, at that moment in time. Plus, my desire to, uh, shall we say, actually keep writing and improving myself, just like you guys. You guys are coming here with Toastmasters with the intent to improve one by one by one. In the same way, writing is nothing but the desire to keep improving your ability to write and convey certain things to certain audiences. And over a period of time, uh, talking about music, for example, my very first book was a book on classical music. Okay? Uh, again, this is. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm clumsy today. Uh, so, this is a book on, on Indian classical music, and I don't expect anyone to be showing interest in it, but again, it was my passion. And I translated that passion in a period of three months. I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. And then I was actually able to, uh, shall we say, con a publisher into publishing it, which, which, is, which, is, you know, which is another side of it, right? So classical music was here. There was, there was a whole book on, uh, on short stories over here. Uh, this particular book also got translated into other languages and so on, which is this, this Canada book, for example. But then again, my interest is in teaching. I, I teach, as I said, at the English Management. And uh, accidentally, or whatever the case may be, I have actually picked up some knowledge which others at the moment don't have. So I'm one step ahead of them, but anyone can catch up very fast. So I've written this book on how to write proposals. And look at the irony of it. What your passions are, my passion is in this music. And I wrote, I, I'm very proud of this book. The only problem is nobody reads it. That's a different issue. It doesn't matter. 
the, the book that, I, that I've written for a, for a management audience called How to Write Proposals is, in my opinion, an extremely boring book. It is really dull. I mean, I wrote a very dull book, almost by design. And look, the irony of life is that it's a very popular book. People buy it by, by the hundreds. You know, I get a very nice royalty check periodically, and I guess so this is life, it's unfair, you know. So this book, which I should have made crores from, got me nothing. But the other one, which I was not very proud of, got me, got me a lot. So, and then the most recent book, which was published by HarperCollins last year, was a book called Sherlock Holmes in Japan, okay, in which this guy does various things. If you know, some of you have a passion in of Sherlock Holmes, I presume, I don't know if you know. So that. But anyway, it's, a, it's, a, it's another kind of book. A guy goes to India, learns about classical music, becomes a vegetarian, all kinds of interesting, uh, you know, side stories. And the current book I'm writing is about uh, how organizations really work. Okay, so it's a little bit of a satire, a humor, but again, there's, a, there's theory and there's practice. How am I doing on time? Am I all right? Yeah, you're on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I saw you nodding away, so I was afraid I had to be sorry. So, anyway, the point here is, I think that at my, I'm 51 now, I have tried to maximize my, my uh, experience. I have traveled a lot. I have actually made things happen. I've traveled around the world. Strange places, strange things have happened to me. But when I say that, it's not that it's only happened to me. I can tell you, each of you, it happened to each of you. Each of you has had incredible experiences, which, for whatever reason, you have hesitated to bring forward. Or maybe I'm, I'm assuming this may be a wrong assumption. You have hesitated to bring it forward. But in our lifespan of anywhere from 65 to 95 years, whatever that might be, there certainly has to be a legacy that you're going to be leaving behind. And the written word is one such legacy. It can be other kinds of work. It could be the value that you pass to your children. It could be other kinds of things. But in terms of permanence, the written, written word has a, has a lasting power that lasts through generations. You know, and therefore, I would, I would say that let us not undermine our ability to translate our wonderful experiences, whether good or bad, ugly, whatever they are, getting them to write about it gives a certain grace to our experience of life, of living. You know, which I would strongly recommend as something that should be done. Again, uh, talking about the fact that there's no particular age and time when something should start. You know, uh, so I, I, when, I was a, when I was learning the violin, my teacher was in Calcutta. Uh, so I used to go to this very old, venerable man who used to live in a small little house in Calcutta, and I used to go and learn from him. And uh, I was probably in my late 20s at that particular phase when I was very deep into classical music. And uh, then I saw this rather elderly man. I have supposed now he's probably my age, but I thought of him as very elderly at that point in time. But he was, I think, 55 or 60 or something like that. And then he was learning from scratch. He was a beginner. Okay? Um, and, and, you know, I, I was obviously being a typical, you know, a product of Indian society and culture. I was a little, you know, kind of, Annoyed, or shall we say, I was a little skeptical or contentious. Yeah, that's right, but contentious. Why is this old man trying to uh, you know, learn music at his age? What does it mean? I think it was a stupid question, but that was just because of the way I was indoctrinated. And he said, All my life I wanted to learn. I didn't get the opportunity. Now I have the opportunity and I'm going to learn. I don't care whether I sing well, don't sing well, I must learn. And for some reason, it was a eureka moment for me, and I thought, This is a really you know, wonderful man. Rather a humble person of very obviously, uh, you know, not very economically well off, indulging in a passion, product of which is only appreciated by him, but nobody else. He will learn and make life, you know, some, make something out of that passion. So the point here is, in, in, in likewise, likewise, I do not, not know what is driving you to do whatever you're doing today. If someone has a desire to write, I don't think there's any right time to begin that thing. It's just like you have those masters clubs to enhance your uh, already, you know, frankly, very powerful personalities and your ability to speak, etc., etc. Those are things you've thought through. Similarly, there are writers, groups, or collectives where you can encourage each other and write of various kinds of things. Whether it's a travelogue, whether it's, uh, it's fiction, whether it's your, or your opinion about, uh, I don't know, uh, engineering or whatever the case may be. I am very familiar with the publishing industry in India today. Okay, I know all the publishers very, very well. The odd thing about it is, they are, they are struggling to find writers. Though you may have heard something different if you, if, you, if you know this business, you will probably only hear that they get rejected every time. That's not true. It's just that quality, if quality is not there, they will reject it, but they're looking for quality manuscripts of various kinds. 
So if the idea is at some point to publish, if, if the idea is, which can be another secondary objective, then I would say there's no right time to uh, start. It is now. You just start now. Right? Yeah. The green, I don't get, is it a gift? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you can, you it's, can speak still. Okay, okay, all right. That is for a minute more. Excuse me. So, um, that, so what I'm trying to say is, I, uh, again, all this is this stuff, what we're seeing over here, is, I think, both the result of passion and perseverance, which I think is true for anything that we do in life. Right? And I simply feel that if you, if you for example, the short stories are 30 vignettes or windows into particular events that have probably hit me at certain points, and certainly they would have hit you as well. You know, the passing away of a loved one, for example, or the birth of a new child, you know, or some, or, or, or travel to a strange place where strange things happen to you. Those need to be documented, not just in your memory, because as the passage of time, well, we die, and then what happens to those memories? So the best thing to do is, Sit and start, start writing. Okay? Uh, I don't think I should say anything more. I can already sense that people are drooping and uh, kind of getting bored. So this is the right time. I will give up the red card for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but if you have any questions or observations, you want to throw some tomatoes at me, you're most welcome. I'm right here to see tomatoes are expensive these days. Yeah. <laughs> any questions? Any Did you have trouble publishing your first book? I beg your pardon? Did you have trouble publishing your first book? Uh, not really, no. But again, I mean, but there's luck. The luck and you know, the luck and destiny is there in everyone's life. Uh, and uh, it so happened that the, the publisher was on this culture trip. He wanted to publish books in Indian culture at this phase. So my manuscript was in Indian classical music and all the stuff, so everything went, went beautifully. And then from there, there's no looking back. Okay. Yeah. So, what is the important things we need to keep to uh, keep the passion? Uh, what, what are the important things we need to take care of for keeping? Uh, Passion. I know. Passion is alright. So, how do you keep your passion alive? One thing is to ignore everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, there, are, there, are, there, are people, there are people who have really logical, rational reasons why you should not do what you are doing. And if you are unfortunately intimidated by such forces of evil or forces of rational thinking, then you know, you, you are just actually, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are at this place, you are at this this standing here. And what that person is doing is actually pulling you back from diving into an ocean of wonderful experiences. You know, the, 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 the fear of coming down, what will happen? They say, we, you know, settle down. Mm -hmm. don't, don't go into the place. Hold yourself back. Be a well-rounded citizen of this country and do not do anything irrational and stupid like indulging in your passions. <laughs> whether, whether it's making dosas, whether it is, I don't know, whatever it could be, it, it makes you happy. But somebody doesn't want to see you. So that's one. That's, but second thing, and this, I mean, I know I, I said that in jest. The second point, I think, passion also requires practice. You know, uh, so for example, if you want, uh, I think you were talking about keyboards. Somebody was about to do keyboards, right? You were talking about keyboards, and he knows as a person who's now got into the keyboard thing that if he misses a day of practice, there is a stiffness in his fingers that only he can feel, and therefore every day, the more you practice, the more you out from the keyboard. It is the same thing to write. For example, when you write, how do you convey energy? How do you can, how do you write conversations between people? What are the kinds of words to you and what are the kinds of words not to you? That only comes with practice. Okay. So uh, you had a question, sir. Battle is unique. I don't know what to tell you. So the, as I said, you know, the, 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 there are all, there's always a reason why you cannot do. For example, family. There's a wife nagging you there. There's a, there's a boss who's irritating, irritating you, demanding that you work for 20 hours a day. You know, that there's a desire for money in the car. So somewhere along the way, all these things that you really want to do get lost. And then when you suddenly wake up and say, "I want to do those," either your body doesn't permit you, or the situation is not allowing you to do that. So therefore, I'm just saying uh, again. Without, without sounding too much of a, what's the word I'm looking at? Uh, uh, the word I'm thinking is anarchy. I'm not, I'm not advocating anarchy necessarily, but I'm simply saying that you know, if you really have a passion, you have to get that time and just put things aside and lock yourself into a room 
and ask your family to just go on a vacation for some time. I don't know what else to do. But there's always a really good reason why you cannot, you, they tell you you cannot do this. So, in fact, it happened to me. When I went to Calcutta, I remember my, my sister, and I never expected her to support me. She on the contrary said, this is not the time for you to be doing these kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> you should have done it 10 years ago, which I also had done. But yeah, that was that's what happened. What do I say? You know, I, I, I don't consider myself 51. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, yes, you have to do one. I don't keep quiet. <laughs> Your question? I have a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 so, how do you feel? Yeah, let me take a question. Yeah. You spoke about you should forget about the others. So, what happens with me when I write, when I read it myself, I don't, I even not like that. Ah. So, I just shut it off and then stop writing. So, that, that you make a very good point. So, you know, there, there's some amount of, uh, uh, you know, humorous stuff that I talked about. The other side is the deadly serious stuff of writing and polishing and polishing, just like marble and anything. It will happen. Okay. Uh, and certainly, so there's another thing called the art of editing. You know, which, which means you have your ability to revisit and be very brutal on your writing and just tear apart everything again and again. But again, like I said, you need a support group. You are going to need some three or four or five friends who have a similar, you know, passion which is bubbling like champagne. And you all get together from time to time and critique each other. And for example, there are these literary festivals that happen even in Bangalore. You should attend those. Those are the kinds of things which will actually invigorate you and, and energize you and inspire you. You feel that yes, if this guy can write, for example, if this guy can write, why can't why can't I write? You know that kind of thing. That should be added. You know? Yes, please. You have a question. I'm sorry. I should have taken your question. I'll take a question again. Yeah. Now, how do you get down to writing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's that million dollar question again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm unfortunately, ma'am. Uh, I can only say that. The, the first trigger, at least for certain kinds of people, has to be some kind of event which is emotionally disturbing, which forces you to come and sit and sit and write. But nevertheless, the point is, there's always an excuse not to write, as we have discussed. Uh, there, there is no right time. Right now, I'm stalling. I'm, I'm a victim of my own thing. I have been stalling right now. The last 5% of my last book, there's always a good reason why I can't write. Computer is slow, internet's not working, you know, I broke my leg, you know, there's always a kind of excuses. But then unfortunately, there's no recipe there. It's just pure determination and a desire to just get it out of the way. Self-imposed deadlines. I think I should step down. Uh, you know. <laughs> Why is <laughs> Madam Ms. Sartre going to be Just the last day. Yeah. What are the various aspects we keep in mind for writing? I mean, other than the content itself, how do you go about it? Journey? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so a lot of people will say that, you know, I just write. That, that's the full, you know, yes, I'm sorry, that's not a postmaster word. But, uh, and, uh, yeah. but, so, but you have to plan. Again, you know, just like whether it's music, whether it's engineering, whether it's software, you can't simply start doing stuff. One is the theoretical basis, which means language, grammar, the content, all of it is set in your mind. But certainly you have to have a blueprint of knowing what you're doing, where you're going. It actually makes your life easy. So how will the plot unfold? How will you, you know, uh, what who are the characters, what are the characteristics, you know, what is the plot? So if, if you say that things will emerge as I keep writing, yes it will, but it will be very disorganized. And no one will pay attention to it. So you just like any other project, it has to be a systematic business plan kind of thing. Ultimately this is a business for publishers. They don't want, you know, your creative uh, ramblings. They want something that will sell. Uh, three questions? Yeah. I, I, yeah, so, so, last question. Yes. So, 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 you said uh, you traveled a lot. Yeah. So, how did that help you? Oh, how did it help me? Yeah. Well, invariably, uh, you know, I mean, you encounter strange people, strange situations, get into trouble, you know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, Cambodia, Bulgaria, you know, strange places I have been to, I have never thought I'd ever be there. And again, I met strange, crazy people, and funny things happen to me. Now either, either you can forget about it, then you can forget about it, or you can write about it. And, and, and in fact, I'm here to tell you that the travel writing is the most significantly underserved writing uh, segment, if that helps you. Thank you very much.